Where is Harvey? Where is Harvey Dent? This is so sad. Everybody's asking where is Harvey Dent, but nobody wants to ask how is Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent is such an interesting and compelling character. He's the literal and metaphorical personification of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is what he was based off of when he was created by Bill Finger in the 40s. I have loved the Two-Face character ever since my BTS rerun days. Harvey, no. So it's such a shame for me to say that he's grossly overshadowed in the 2008 film The Dark Knight by the main villain. Which is understandable, I mean Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker is legendary for a reason. Let's put a smile on that face. I just wish that Aaron Eckhart's dent got the recognition I think he deserves. A villain obsessed with the purity of chance is so fascinating to me, but what else fascinates me is his exact snapping point into anarchy. So let's analyze some of his scenes to determine his snapping point, starting with some pre-tragedy scenes to establish what kind of person he was. Order. Permission to treat the witnesses hostile. Granted. Hostile? I see you hostile! <laughs> Carbon fiber, 28 caliber, main China. If you want to kill a public servant, Mr. Maroney, I recommend you buy American. Get him out of here. But your honor, I'm not done. I don't want to over explain the obvious here. He's righteous, he's not the type of person to give up, and most importantly, he has a very positive public image, which is important throughout the film. Now we've gotten a glimpse into his work life as Gotham's newly elected district attorney, so let me set the scene for a peek into his personal life. Harvey is in a relationship with a woman named Rachel Dawes. Yes, the same Rachel Dawes Bruce Wayne happens to be madly in love with, just with a different face. Katie Holmes didn't reprise her role as Rachel Dawes, which I think is an okay thing. She just didn't work for me, but Maggie Gyllenhaal killed it in this role. So Harvey takes Rachel on a date to a restaurant Bruce Wayne happens to own. He third wheels on their date and brings his own fourth wheel too, just to make it easier to drive. And of course, the conversation turns to the Batman and we get to hear Harvey's opinion on him. I'm talking about the kind of city that idolizes a masked vigilante. Gotham City is proud of an ordinary citizen standing up for what's right. Gotham needs heroes like you, elected officials, not a man who thinks he is above exactly. the law. Exactly. Who appointed the Batman? We did. All of us who stood by and let scum take control of our city. And this scene also brings possibly the most well-known Harvey Dent quote in all of DC history. Okay, fine. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. This is foreshadowing for two different things. First of all, it represents Harvey's eventual turn to villainy. But I think it's also a deeper reflection of Batman's decision at the end of the film to take the blame for Harvey's sins. So Harvey, one, dies a hero, and two, lives long enough to see himself become the villain. He is both sides of the same coin. Overall, I feel Harvey is the most overtly good character we've seen on screen, and somehow it still doesn't feel unnatural in any way. He is pure and intentional. Now, let's take a step back and exhibit one of the most intriguing pieces of Harvey's character, his coin. Well then, fair's fair. Heads I'll take it. Tailsy's all yours. Oh yeah? You want to flip a coin to see who leads? It's my father's lucky coin. As I recall, it got me my first date with you. I wouldn't leave something like that up to chance. I don't. I make my own luck. Harvey connects the coin to his memory of Rachel, but not only that, it also represents his unwillingness to trust chance. Jumping up to a scene that has some more high stakes, Rachel is taken and Harvey is interrogating one of Joker's thugs. Ed? You gotta keep your head. Tails, not so lucky. So, you wanna tell me about the Joker? <laughs> Let's go again. I don't know anything! I don't! You're not playing the odds, friend. Let's do it again. leave a man's life to chance not exactly a little sidebar here i'd just like to say that david oh god dest mulchian i'm sorry if i mispronounced that but he gives so much personality to such a minor character it's an incredible feat he plays the thug in this scene 
and he barely has any lines, but there's just so much personality to the character. But now we're seeing an aggressive side of Harvey, one who's threatening a man's life just to get information. Later, the audience finds out that the coin is double-sided, both sides are heads, so the goon's life was never in any real danger. Harvey is sane. Desperate, but sane. And now approaches one of the greatest turning points of the movie. Joker has Harvey and Rachel in separate locations. Batman gets the addresses, but can only save one of them. And it's not like the Joker is a reliable source of information, so ironically, Batman gets a 50-50 chance of who he'd save. I want to tell you something, okay? Don't think like that, Rachel. They're coming for you. I know they are, but I don't want them to. I don't want to live without you, and I do have an answer for you. And my answer is yes. Harvey had already accepted his fate. He was ready to die as long as Rachel lived. But that's not what happened. That night, the love of his life was killed and he was severely disfigured. This is devastating. However, I don't actually think it's Harvey's snapping point. I believe it's a common misconception that this is where his sanity broke. He now shows the traits of a man who's lost everything and who's going through so much grief. He's not unstable yet, but he is at his most vulnerable stage. Vulnerable enough for anything to set him off, which is exactly what happens. Batman is riddled with grief and guilt. He brings the coin to the hospital. Harvey's coin. The coin he owes his whole relationship to. The coin that in his eyes literally represents Rachel. And it's ruined. You can tell just by seeing the coin he's instantly put at ease, but as he turns it around and sees that half of it is burned, he breaks down. This is it. This is the exact moment Harvey Dent snaps. Not because of Joker or Gordon, but because of Batman. Batman broke Harvey. The Joker simply picked up the pieces and created a twisted monster. Bruce Wayne has just as much to do with the creation of Two-Face as Joker did. And that changes the entire context of the villain and the film in general. Two-Face now gives people the same 50-50 chance he and Rachel had. He's truly sadistic. But you said it couldn't hurt your chances. Harvey Dent is dead, Batman killed him, in more ways than one. It's not about what I want, it's about what's fair! You thought we could be decent men in an indecent time! You were wrong. The world is cruel, and the only morality in a cruel world is chance. Unbiased, unprejudiced. There. Also, I had nowhere to put this, but just look at Harvey's face. This movie came out in freaking 2008. That's some phenomenal CGI, and it holds up to this day. I just wanted to say that.